Hello there. Hopefully you can see me past the uh, sagging headlining, but uh, welcome back to the shed, which in this case is my 2004 Jaguar S-Type. I've owned this car for about 10 months and really enjoyed it. I've been totally surprised. It was an impulse purchase at uh, local car auctions and I thought it looked cheap. I later discovered it wasn't that cheap because they're literally worth nothing. However, mine's had a small fault for pretty much most of the time I've owned it in that the thermostat is obviously defective and the car never gets up to full operating temperature so the temperature gauge does this instead of this which is really annoying i've had the part for ages i've just been putting off fitting it but today i'm going to fix that and i'm going to show you how i do it well there's the beast that's the 2.7 liter turbo diesel twin turbo diesel v6 uh, as found in the first gen ranger of a sport and discovery 3 models um, albeit with a slight difference in that they're single turbo and not twin and the thermostat housing is nestled down in the middle of the V there so as far as I can tell it's not quite such a scary job as what it looks at f and first appearance yeah let's uh, let's do it just gonna don the obligatory pair of uh, Ed Chinas because she's a bit of an oily beast okay obviously I've removed the plastic engine cover already which just requires taking the oil filler cap off but you want to make sure you put that straight back because you don't want any of this detritus going in the engine start off with a seven mil clip driver or socket whatever you've got and a flat bladed screwdriver interesting when i bought the car this clip was out somebody had had it off and not put it back in properly and i think maybe it was the reason that the car was in the auction in the first place because this hose had become half detached so it was just leaking basically all the boost pressure and uh, and the car was massively underperforming and smoking like a train uh, so all it required was that putting back in and uh, and she was back to full complement of ponies but um, just remove this electrical connector from there come off okay these are the two EGR uh, inlet pipe I think we just Two eight mil nuts just on the brackets holding those pipes in place just to give us some wiggle room bolts even they just pull out there we go 10 mil nut on top of there Another electrical connector. That's all the connectors out of the way. Easy as that. Right, just get these vac pipes out of the way. One, two. Well, that was just a little bit stiff, stuck in place after 20 years, probably. So, it's just that one bolt holding it in. So now, I think it's a case of just wiggling this around and somehow it becomes free. It don't look like it's going to, but that, I'm told, is the, the way to do it. Uh, right, so there's the thermostat housing. You'd be forgiven for not recognising it at all, because it's not like one that I've ever seen. Of course, what we haven't done yet is drain down the coolant, so I'll do that next. Being a window cleaner does come with some additional benefits, one of those being that you end up with loads of spare water pumps and stuff kicking about so I'm going to pump the coolant down to below the level of the thermostat housing and then uh, hopefully reduce the mess and be able to do it all from above. Well that's got the coolant low enough to, uh, to carry on. There's a spring clip on this big pipe here. Some needle nose pliers on these. Oh, classic car club now. MG MG Triumph Alpha TR7 and a Volvo. <laughs> we do get a few treats living here. Tractor runs and bike clubs and whatever. I wouldn't normally leave her against a plastic housing, but as it's the one that's coming off, I don't feel too bad about it. Oh, that's not so bad. 
there's four eight mil headed bolts to come out. One, two, three, four. So it should be the case now of just breaking the seal between that and the block. Tell you what, here's the new one. Yeah, okay, it's just something that's speeded up in there that needs to come out. And there it is. Victory! Looks like the new one. What was a relief? Right, well, we don't need that anymore. Just get a bit of rag and just clean around the faces of these because there's a little bit of dirtiness. So let's just hope that that o-ring there is suitable for another 20 years. <laughs> Seals in there and there. Cool. Let's get it on. Black, the black speech. Yeah, I think all this has been loosened up by me waggling around the uh, thing to get it out. That's why it was a bit reluctant to come out. So obviously you don't want all that just sat in there, ready to get sucked straight into the engine. Horribleness. Interestingly, everybody always scapegoats the EGR system for deposits like this. And it's true to say that yes, uh, in part it is responsible but it's the combination of that with the crankcase breather system that then gives you that oil the medium for it to stick together there's an interesting video on it on uh, from driving for answers on youtube actually that's worth a watch coolie oh ah, we'll just clean this up now Like peeling an apple. Ah! <laughs> That's what we want. Smells good. Good old GoPro, battery died there unfortunately, but uh, luckily I noticed in time. They've cleaned up nicely. Yeah, ideally the new thermostat kit would come with these two O-rings and the one on the, on the pipe at the back there, but uh, inevitably they don't. And it's, when you get to this stage of the job, you realize you probably should have, could have bought them, but I haven't, so the old ones will be staying on. This just is the re reverse of the wiggling in wheeling out process it should be a bit easier because we've cleaned it but <laughs> 10 mil from there that's got it right let's do electrical connectors before I forget one to <coughs> back pipes, left to left and right to right. Ooh, that was a bit easier than getting it out. One for you, and one for you. Just about does it, I think, doesn't it?
Well, that's a satisfying little job then. I was actually putting that job off for quite a while because I didn't fancy doing it, but it was, it was really easy. It's one of those ones that just looked a bit harder than what it actually was, but it didn't seem to require any intervention on bleeding. It's uh, sorted itself out, run up to temperature and good as gold. So sorted. But I hope that's helpful to anyone else doing a thermostat on, uh, on, this, on the 2.7 V6 in a Jag or a, uh, or a Land Rover and gives you the uh, confidence to get on and do it like I uh, put off for uh, a number of months. <laughs> but thanks for watching anyway. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.